We are all dealing with rapidly expanding attack surfaces, whether it's a simple phishing scam targeting work from home employees or a large scale coordinated attack. You need to ensure your organization is secure. Today I sit down with Simon Saunders to discuss how a zero trust strategy can accelerate the prevention and mitigation of security breaches. On Inside Track. Hi, I'm coming to you from my home office in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and today with me is Simon Saunders beaming in from London, England. As part of Cisco's Customer Experience Product Management Organization, Simon is responsible for Cisco's security strategy, planning, and implementation services. He's been delivering IT security solutions for over 15 years and has been a CISO at several organizations. Welcome, Simon. Glad to be here, Pat. Well, Simon, what drives your passion for IT security and Zero Trust specifically? I've been at it for nearly 20 years now, Pat, so clearly it's got to keep me engaged. And for me, it's just ever-changing. We see the threats that our customers face keep evolving, keep changing as our attackers innovate. And then on top of that, we have our customers whose businesses keep changing. They keep wanting to do new things, work in new ways, use new technologies. And just that melting pot of all those things throws up fresh challenges, fresh conversations, fresh ideas every single day. And when we think about zero trust, what really excites me is there's many long-standing security principles and concepts that we've talked about for years and years and years, but the reality is they've not really been operationally viable. And I think now with the concept of zero trust and some of the ways we bring this together neatly, we've got a real chance to implement these long-standing security principles and concepts uh, and really better defend our customers' networks as a result. Well, I mean, it really sounds like there's never a dull date at the office for you. Uh, you know, we continue to hear about the ever-increasing number of cybersecurity breaches. And in the last year, with the move to so many working from home, the average organizations had a big increase in their possible attack surface. I mean, attacks have been as simple as a phishing scheme targeted at work from home employees or at a corporate network, as we saw with the recent Colonial Pipeline breach. They also can be highly coordinated state actors, as we saw with SolarWinds. Zero Trust is getting a lot of buzz as a way to protect organizations. Unfortunately, it can be a confusing topic. You know, Simon, can you tell us more about what Zero Trust is and how it can help protect organizations? Absolutely. I think when we think about a well-deployed Zero Trust environment, I think what we see is many more security controls than we can traditionally support in conventional networks today. But when we deploy these, we do it in a way that is very sympathetic to users. In many cases, it actually improves the user experience. And what this means is that we're better securing our networks, better than we ever have before, uh, without unduly impacting users. And, and that's why it's such a, a, an interesting, engaging topic. Yeah, well, you know, Cisco is the largest network security company in the world, and Zero Trust is a core competency. What is Cisco's specific approach to Zero Trust? If you look at my colleagues on the partner side of the business, they really hone in on workload, workforce, and workplace. And if you double-click the three Ws, you see they very much align to the five or six Zero Trust pillars that we see talked about in other parts of the security industry. And then my part of the business in CX, we take that amazing technology, the way that it all works together so, so well, and we take it to our customers and we make it real for them. We, we meet them in the middle with uh, all of their complexity, all of their challenges, all of the things they want to do and need to do and make it a reality for them. Oh, well, you know, normally we think of the goal of IT security as stopping attacks before they breach an organization. And Zero Trust has this mitigation goal behind it and seems to be a real key difference in strategy there. Can you dive a little deeper into how Zero Trust minimizes damage if a primary security defense is breached? Absolutely. We've seen in a lot of cases the attacker manages to compromise a relatively low value device and, and the employee attached to it. And in fact, they, they masquerade as that employee and have a huge amount of access to resources as a result. Um, what we're going to do in Zero Trust is just start ratcheting that back. Um, if, attacker, if a user is breached by an attacker, we find that they access 
much less natively. The, the attack is much more innocuous from the start. And if they try to expand their attack, they find barriers and, and obstacles in the way that are a problem for the user, but for the attacker, they're a, a real issue. And that just stems the, you know, the growth of the attack in a, in a new way. Well, can you provide a real life example? How about if a company's employee falls victim to a phishing attack? How will Zero Trust mitigate that type of damage? Absolutely. So what we see in an attack like that is a user receives an email, they click a link, they open an attachment, um, and, and through a number of steps, the, the outside attacker acts as that user on the network. So um, if they can access you know, file systems and machines and, and applications with relatively little challenge, we find they've got a huge landscape in front of them, and the attacker can really take their pick. With zero trust, if we see that when they go to applications, maybe unusual applications with a particular user, it's not that the user can't access them, it's just there's a challenge in place. There's a you know need to sign in again, there's a need to re-authenticate. Maybe we see users authenticated for a relatively short amount of time on the network. You know, maybe every day being asked to sign into that HR application again. Um, and attackers just find this so, so challenging. It slows them down to such a great extent that we really give a, a security advantage as a result. Well, if the attacker is being challenged for access each time they try to breach a new asset, that must really slow down the expansion of a breach. And so does Zero Trust also mean the attacker is leaving a bigger footprint that will help bring their activity to the attention of a company's security operations center? Absolutely. We're putting in many more control gates than perhaps we had before. And all of those generate logs, they generate reports for us. And all that gives us more data to work with. And, and it's quality data as well. It's the kind of data that is really useful to a SOC. But I think the other thing we try to do with Zero Trust really elegantly is to pull these disparate data sources together to make some contextual decisions. And if we can, to automate that response. So Part of it is getting more data and having more information across more place on the network, but bringing it all together and doing something better with it is, is really when we start seeing Zero Trust work very well. Well, how does this make the SOC's job easier? Um, SOC team's doing an amazing job, but they're always battling against time. So, you know, quite often it's reactionary, the breach happens and they're chasing it. And all they're trying to do is catch up, get ahead of the attacker and stop them before they do too much damage. Now, Zero Trust natively slows that attack down. It natively limits the amount of information and data and assets that that attacker can get to. And that is an absolute gift to a SOC who now have more time to find that attack. And during that window, the impact is much less than it would otherwise have been. And that's a... That's a great advantage. It allows a SOC to be much more impactful. Well, you know, with the average breach taking more than 200 days to detect, slowing down the attack and making it more visible is certainly key to mitigating attack damage. I mean, on average, enterprises save a million dollars by containing breaches in less than 200 days. Given that zero trust is as much a cultural shift as it is a standard, unlike a simple product rollout, there must be plenty of places where organizations can run into hurdles. As our teams work with customers, what are some of the common things you see organizations do that really minimize the speed and effectiveness of deploying a zero trust strategy? Um, I, I think one of the common challenges is approaching this as just a security project. It is much more that it's an architectural change. So I think we need to uh, pull in a good number of stakeholders, all our key IT partners from different parts of the business, people like HR and, and different user groups to come in and support this and, and have a voice. And what's so interesting as a security person who's seen security normally throw up barriers, incur costs, be a real challenge. In this conversation, we can talk about operational efficiency. We can talk about enabling things that have perhaps been not viable before. And not only do we need these stakeholders to help us, we actually turn them into champions for the Zero Trust Initiative, and, and that's so key. And then uh, I think sitting behind that is you need a strategy, you need a plan, you need to be able to go and execute uh, very effectively to, to drive strong Zero Trust outcomes, especially to do that at speed. Yeah, well, as you were saying, 
just the fact that you're able to go in and be a partner with the business and to try to drive those business outcomes as opposed to being just the person that says no has got to be a great feeling, you know, compared to the normal role you might have played in security. So for, for organizations that want to get started with zero trust or redirect a zero trust rollout that has gone wrong, where do you suggest they start? Um, I really come back to that stakeholder group to start with, and I mentioned that a minute ago, but we really need to make zero trust real for them. We need to help them understand what zero trust is, but really make it very relevant to them and their business and to understand what zero trust would look like for them. And, and that drives some energy. That drives some enthusiasm. From there, we need to take a look at where the organization is today. It's going to have pockets that are zero trust aligned and, and really strong and, and a, a good place to start. And there are also places where it's going to be quite evident that work needs to be done. Um, and from that, you can derive a strategy. And for me, when you start addressing zero trust, go and find those quick wins, those big success stories. Go and make those changes that everyone can see. Make them achievable. Make sure you can do them and do them quickly. And you've got your quick wins. You've got a buzz. You've got some momentum. And you can just go forwards from there. There, there will be challenges. There will be hard things. But if you've got that momentum, it's so much easier. Well, Simon, thanks very much for your time today and all the great insight on Zero Trust. While this is a topic that can be cloudy for many organizations, it should be in everyone's plans to leverage as a key tool to stop or mitigate breach impacts. To learn how Cisco CX can help you empower the IT behind a world-class event experience, contact your Cisco representative or click on the button below. We look forward to seeing you on the next CX Inside Track.